Okay, so many of you guys might not know this about me, but I actually happen to be one hell of a good javelin thrower. All right, so let's have a look at a worked example from when I threw a javelin the other day. Oh God. You alright man? Alright, just calm down, just calm down. I've got this, I've got this, I've got this. Three, two, one. Ah! Okay, so this question says a javelin is thrown so that its height h metres above the ground is given by the rule h of t is equal to 20t minus 5t squared plus 2, where t represents time in seconds. Okay, so question A says find the rate of change of height at any time t. B, find the rate of change of the height when t equals 1, 2, and 3 seconds. C, briefly explain why the rate of change is initially positive, then 0, then negative over the first 3 seconds. And D, find the rate of change of the height when the javelin first reaches a height of 17 metres. Okay, so let's do part A first. Find the rate of change of height at any time t. What this is saying is find the gradient or differentiate. So we've got h of t is equal to 20t minus 5t squared plus 2. All right, differentiate, so you get h dashed of t. 20t differentiate just becomes 20. 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. t, drop the power by 1, just gives you 1, so you just leave it as it is. And when you differentiate positive 2 at the end, you just get nothing. Right, part B, find the rate of change of the height when t equals 1. So that means we need to substitute into the house steep rule for rate of change, meaning gradient. So we just substitute t equals 1 into h dash of t is equal to 20 minus 10t. Substitute in t equals 1 now, so you got h dash of 1 is equal to 20 minus 10 bracket 1 is equal to 20 minus 10 is 10. Substituting t equals 2 now, h dash of t is equal to 20 minus 10t. Therefore, h dash of 2 is equal to 20 minus 10 bracket 2. 20 minus 20 is just 0. And t equals 3, h dash of t is equal to 20 minus 10t. h dash of 3 becomes 20 minus 10 bracket 3. 20 minus 30 becomes negative 10. Briefly explain the rate of change is initially positive, then 0, then negative over the first 3 seconds. Alright, so let's just draw a graph to help us do this. Now, of course, it's a javelin, so we'll just have the guy throw on the javelin, and it's going to go up, and then come back down and hit the ground. Alright, so t equals 1, t equals 2, and t equals 3 seconds. At 1 second, the javelin is going up. After 2 seconds, the javelin is flat, and then after the three seconds, the javelin's coming back down again. This is why after one second, the rate of change is positive. After two seconds, the rate of change is zero because it's reached its maximum height. And after three seconds, it's negative because the javelin's going back down to the ground. Therefore, the javelin is going up for the first two seconds. When t equals two, the javelin has reached its maximum height. And from two seconds onwards, that is when t is greater than two, the javelin is going downwards or towards Jerry's leg. The next question says, find the rate of change of the height when the javelin first reaches a height of 17 metres. Okay, so this one here has given us h is equal to 17. It's told us how high it is, so we need to substitute into the how high rule. So the how high rule is the original one, so h of t is equal to 20t minus 5t squared plus 2. Right, it's told me how high it is, so that means we're going to substitute 17 into here. It's equal to 20t minus 5t squared plus 2. Subtract 17. We get 0 equals 20t minus 5t squared minus 15. Take out a common factor of negative 5, so you get negative 5 bracket t squared minus 4t plus 3. Factorise the brackets now, you get 0 is equal to negative 5. Factors of 3 that add to negative 4 and negative 3 and negative 1, so you get t minus 3 and t minus 1. Solving for this now, you end up getting t minus 3 is equal to 0, or t minus 1 is equal to 0. Therefore, t is equal to 3, or t is equal to 1. Now the question says, find the rate of change of the height when the javelin first reaches a height of 17 metres. Well, clearly it's going to first reach a height of 17 metres when t equals 1. Now we could just go to the answer that we got before, but we'll go through for good habits just to practice. So we're going to differentiate and find the how steep rule. So you're going to go h of t is equal to 20t minus 5t squared plus 2. Therefore, h dash of t is equal to 20 minus 10t. Substitute in t equals 1 now to find out how steep it was or the rate of change when t equals 1. So you get h dash of 1 
is equal to 20 minus 10 bracket 1, which is equal to 10. Therefore, the rate of change is equal to 10 meters per second. I'll tell you what guys, poor Jerry, he seriously cops it in these videos, doesn't he? You really gotta feel sorry for the guy. Anyway, before we finish up today's lesson, we've got one more worked example. Wait, wait a second. Can, can you guys hear that? I think it's getting louder. Duck for cover, go! Now the shockwave from the nuclear blast that you've just witnessed has spread out over the ground level in a circular manner. Now first of all, the question wants us to A, write down a relationship between the area of ground A over which the shockwave passes and its radius R kilometres. The next question B says find the rate of change of A with respect to R. Part C says find the rate of change of A when the radius is 2 kilometres. And D asks what is the rate of change of A when the area covered is 314 kilometres. Okay, so let's do part A first. Now when the bomb explodes, it says that it spreads out in a circular fashion. And we are looking for a relationship that represents the area of a circle. Well, the area of a circle can be found by doing A is equal to pi R squared, where R is the radius or the distance from the middle to the outside point. The next part says find the rate of change of A with respect to R. What that means is just differentiate. So you have got A is equal to pi R squared, therefore dA on dR is equal to 2 times pi times r. And when we drop the power of 2 by 1, you just get to the power of 1 and you don't need to write the 1. Now it says find the rate of change of a when the radius is 2 kilometers. Okay, so because it's asking us to find the rate of change, we're going to use the rate of change formula or the how steep formula. That is equal to dA on dr is equal to 2 pi r. And it's telling us that r is equal to 2. Therefore, dA on dr is equal to 2 pi times 2 which is equal to 4 pi, which is approximately equal to 12.57 kilometers squared per kilometer. Now the next question asks, what is the rate of change of A when the area covered is 314 kilometers squared? So what it's giving us is the area, area is equal to 314. We now need to substitute that into the formula for area. So we have A is equal to pi r squared. We have 314 is equal to pi r squared. Divide both sides by pi. These cancel out, so you end up getting 100 is equal to r squared. And of course, r is equal to the square root of 100, which is equal to plus or minus 10. Now, because we can't have a radius of negative 10, r is therefore equal to 10 kilometers. Now, what the question is actually asking us to do, though, is find out the rate of change of a when r is equal to 10 kilometers. So what we need to do is we need to use the rate of change formula, or the how steep formula, in other words. So that is dA on dr is equal to 2 pi r. Now I know my r is 10 kilometers from what I've just found out up here. So I substitute back in and I get 2 pi times 10, which is equal to 20 pi, which is approximately equal to 62.8 kilometers squared per kilometer. Therefore, the rate of change of a when the area is 314 kilometers squared is 62.8 kilometers squared per kilometer. Is it safe to come out? Okay guys, thank you very much for tuning into today's lesson on rates of change. Make sure you stay tuned for the very next lesson which is all about sketching graphs containing stationary points. Okay guys, and please, if you've turned into a zombie during that apocalypse, please, please, please spare my brains. Alright, like always, say hi to your math teacher for me. Morsey out.